Welcome to this Demikata video. Before we start the actual presentation, I would like to direct your attention to the new Demikata pages at patreon.com. If you like our work and would like to support us, you are most welcome to join our ranks in the Legio Demikatorum, the Legion of Sword Fighters. Get your personal badge and other attractive rewards at patreon.com slash demicator. The link is also provided below this frame. Thank you for your kind interest and support. And now, enjoy the video. Welcome to the Archaeological Museum Hamburg, which currently presents the exposition Mythos Hammerburg on the early medieval origins of the modern city of Hamburg. In 845, the Carolingian stronghold Hammerburg, the original name of Hamburg, was attacked by Danish Vikings. In terms of close combat and historical martial arts, this was a very interesting encounter. Next to spears and axes, both parties, the Danes and the Franks, were using swords in combination with round shields sporting iron bosses. However, these shields were different regarding one crucial detail. The Vikings were still using flat center grip round shields like these replica shields here. Such shields of traditional Germanic design were great weapons for close combat. Flat center gripped round shields could be used actively to open up an opposing shield, creating an opening for the hand weapon to attack. Where to move is defined by pressure sensed through the shield, a concept that is omnipresent in martial arts. Note that vision is mostly obscured by the large shields, but when responding to pressure signals, this is not an issue. The flat board of that kind of shield is ideally suited to transfer pressure into a target, and the target will always be the opposing shield's flat. Because while the edge is strong, the flat is weak, be it on the outside or the inside. Carolingian military, in contrast, had long adopted domed round shields, as period depictions attest to. 
Frankish armies relied on cavalry and foot soldiers trained to fight in rigid formation while the offensive potential of flat shields cannot be played out in these contexts, dome shields offer much better protection because they cannot be levered open as easily. Pressure to the weak of the dome shield board does not make its impact square on and tends to slide off to the side, much in contrast to a flat shield board that can easily be manipulated this way. However, the great defensive qualities of domed shields and their successors, kite-shaped shields and medieval triangle shields, comes at a price. While the traditional flat shield safeguarded the sword arm when thrusting or striking, this is not true for a domed shield. Dome shields were held close to the body in single combat, much like a mobile piece of armor. They were occasionally extended forward, however, not with the edge, but with the boss. Either way, the sword arm was being exposed when delivering a strike or a thrust. So, how did Frankish swordsmen and sword makers respond to these new combat requirements? The current exposition at the Archaeological Museum Hamburg exhibits two very interesting swords that hold a clue to this question. One of the two weapons is of a type that was widespread in Europe from about 750 onwards and remained popular in Scandinavia well through the Viking Age. The relative shortness of many early medieval sword handles has always puzzled researchers and enthusiasts alike. All sorts of theories have been suggested regarding gripping a Spartha-type sword like this one. But weapon design is never arbitrary. It has to meet the requirements of combat and the respective fighting arts. And all martial arts have to follow the rules of physics and anatomy. Squeezing your fingers around the handle of a spatha results in a weapon angulation that is not well suited to transfer pressure into a target. It rather creates a weak spot in the sword arm's wrist. Fully embracing the handle also means that you could not use full weapon range. If, however, you want to extend the sword, you have to hold it differently. As you can see, the hilt is perfectly designed for a grip like this. Part of the pommel is resting on the heel of the hand. The straight pommel plate forms a safe lock for the pinky, preventing the sword from slipping out of the hand when the blade is extended forward to strike a blow. Holding a sword in this fashion offers yet further advantages. This grip is best suited to use proper body mechanics and transfer pressure through the blade into the target. However, if such a sword was used in combination with a dome shield that does not offer protection for the sword arm, the combatant would have to strike a blow in a different fashion. For the blade to form a barrier against an incoming attack, it has to be held at an angle. But this results in a very uncomfortable hand position. The pommel inconveniently bites into the palm when the sword hand is shifted further to the shield side. So this calls for a change in hilt design. And in fact, this Frankish sword seems to respond to the new requirements. This sword, the blade of which is unfortunately broken, is roughly contemporary. It sports a longer crossguard and a smaller pommel. It still allows for fully extending the blade with a pommel plate providing a safe lock for the pinky. The improved pommel design makes it possible to shift the sword hand further to the shield side in order to strike a covering blow. 
So these two swords illustrate a development in close combat from fighting with shield binds to fighting with blade binds, paving the way to historical swordsmanship as reflected in later medieval and renaissance fighting treatises.